Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to this webinar. I see that we've got a few more attendees who are still joining, so let's give them just a couple more minutes. Thank you all for being here again on this uh, as panelists. All right, so I am looking over here. There are still a couple people joining, but let's go ahead and get started. Once again, thank you all our panelists and all of our attendees for attending this webinar on Optimize and Transform Your Warehouse Processes with Microsoft Dynamics 365 Advanced Warehouse Management. Let's get started. Industries such as manufacturing and distribution, retail and logistics across the globe are projected to drive the demand for warehouse management systems or WMS for efficient operations to increase their output and meet rising customer demand. Dynamics 365 Advanced Warehouse Management is a powerful and proven solution from Microsoft that helps you overcome the challenges you come across in everyday operations. This helps you to reduce lead time, increase product delivery speed, and minimize distribution costs, thereby helping you to address the growing customer demand. Now let me introduce the team. Scott Foster, our Senior Director, Manufacturing and Business Consulting Practice, has 25 years of multinational experience in manufacturing and supply chain focusing on business process optimization, involving various ERP systems and ERP implementations. Scott, once again, thank you so much for being here. Yep, thank you again, Susan, and thank everyone for uh, joining us today. And Pavan Yelchuri, our solution architect, has 13 years of experience in implementing and optimizing supply chain and warehouse business solutions over various ERPs and building integrations with legacy systems. Pavan, thank you again for being here. We're so excited to see what you have to say. Glad to be here. Thank you all once again. Welcome all. <laughs> thank you. And Amir Sohail, our senior lead consultant, has 10 years of experience in retail, procurement, inventory, sales, production, and advanced warehouse management and has worked on 14 implementations on Microsoft Dynamics AX 2009, 2012, and Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. Thank you so much, Amir. We're so glad to have you. Thank you, Susan. I'm happy to be here. Great. And just one more housekeeping point before we begin, there will be a question and answer session after the main presentation. You can ask questions at any time using the panel on the interface. All lines are on mute during and after the session. Just a few words about core competence before we dive into the webinar. Core Competence is a Microsoft Gold Certified Partner headquartered in New Jersey, helping customers with innovative technology solutions that address their business challenges and drive their growth. We specialize in the Microsoft Dynamics 365 range of products, such as Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations, Dynamics 365 Business Central, Dynamics 365 Advanced Warehouse Management, Dynamics 365 CRM, Power Platform, and the entire Microsoft ecosystem. We elevate the benefits of ERP implementation with the help of cutting edge Microsoft technologies from the Azure solution stack, like Azure Synapse, IIoT, Cognitive Services, and machine learning to bring value added benefits and insights to customers. As you can see, we have a packed agenda today. Firstly, Scott will take us through the challenges facing distribution and warehouse management and why a proper warehouse management system is the need of the hour. 
Then Amir will give us a brief introduction on the key differentiators of advanced warehouse management that separates it from basic warehousing. And thirdly, Pavan and Amir will take us through some of the important features which advanced warehouse management has to offer. We will also look at some case studies of our customers' experiences with warehouse management, concluding with a demo, next steps, and Q&A. With this, I will now hand over the stage to Scott to take us through the challenges facing warehouse management. Over to you, Scott. Thank you, Susan. Distribution and warehousing face many challenges today, such as the four I will show you on this slide. Improving cost, quality, and delivery are critical areas where warehousing and supply chain managers have constant pressure to keep under control. Manpower, for example, is always precarious because there's not only a cost element, but also a revenue and customer service component, which is always difficult as a manager to keep this in balance. In today's COVID world, warehousing suffers from high attrition, hard to find responsible labor, increasing complexity of business systems, which results in longer training periods. Logistics costs are also creating a strain on all industries as transaction costs are soaring with unprecedented shipping needs. Businesses have quickly discovered that more data entry results in more mistakes, which costs time and money to rectify. Poorly designed warehouse layouts make it impossible to accommodate additional inventory, thereby contributing to the rising costs. Inadequate business systems and processes have led to upset customers, lost inventory, and inadequate training. To top everything off, many companies' business models are changing from large brick and mortar retail stores to more online stores or hybrid models resulting in individual smaller consumer parcel shipments with same or next day delivery. Today, Core Confidence will show you why Microsoft Dynamics Advanced Warehouse Management solutions will help you meet all of your challenges and ultimately help satisfy customer demands and keep you competitive and relevant in the market. Amir will now discuss some key differentiators of the Microsoft D365 basic and advanced warehouse management systems. Amir? Thank you, Scott. Now that you're aware of the challenges faced in distribution and warehousing, let's begin talking about some of the key differentiators. Here are some of the key differences between basic and advanced warehousing. With basic warehousing, you perform all the inventory transactions on a PC or a laptop. With advanced warehousing, there is an inbuilt functionality to utilize a mobile device. Basic warehousing has limited storage dimensions, which are site warehousing locations. Advanced warehousing provides extra storage dimensions apart from the three that I mentioned earlier, which are inventory status and license plate. Advanced warehousing also requires reservation hierarchies and unit sequence groups on every product. The unit sequence group defines the sequence of units of measures that can be used in warehouse operations. The reservation hierarchy is used to defer the reservation of inventory beyond the point in the ordering process where you enter the order. The hierarchy is based on the storage and tracking dimensions of items, such as inventory status, license plate, batch number, and serial number. Basic warehousing doesn't have the functionality to support the packing of items. Advanced warehousing has the functionality to automatically select the appropriate containers for packing, and it also offers the functionality to allow users to manually pack items. In basic warehousing, Cycle counts are performed manually by creating a counting journal, performing the physical count, and entering the counted quantities on the counting journal lines before posting the counting journal. In advanced warehousing, you have many more options. For example, you, you can single out certain items or locations to be counted and have the system create counting work, which can then be processed with a mobile device. The system can also be set up to automatically create cycle count work for a location when the inventory in that location falls below a certain threshold. Companies need to factor in their 
business processes, configuration, testing, training, and ongoing maintenance, and choose the warehousing operation that best fits their requirement. The warehouse management module lets you manage warehouse processes in manufacturing, distribution, and retail companies. This module has a wide range of features to support the warehousing facilities. Warehouse management is fully integrated with other business processes such as procurement, inventory, transportation, manufacturing, quality control, transfers, sales, and returns. Here are some of the key features and functionalities available in advanced warehouse management of Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. Broadly, it encompasses inbound operations, outbound operations, and inventory control. We would be discussing a few of these features like replenishment, cycle counting, small package shipping, cluster picking, quality inspections in more detail. Microsoft is continuously enhancing the capabilities of Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations by introducing new features and functionalities based on the global best practices. The term replenishment can have many different meanings in the context of supply chain management. This slide will focus specifically on restocking fixed forward lo picking locations from bulk storage locations within a warehouse. For instance, we would be talking about two types, wave demand and min-max replenishment. Wave demand creates replenishment work for outbound orders or loads if inventory isn't sufficient in the forward picking locations when the wave creates a work. For example, replenishment work can be created if the quantity that is required for a sales order isn't completely available in the forward picking location when the wave is processed. Picking work will be locked and will be available for the picker to complete only once the replenishment team refills the forward picking location. Min-max replenishment uses the max, minimum and maximum stocking limits to determine when forward picking locations should be replenished, for which items and for how much quantity. To help guarantee that enough inventory is available to meet wave demand, you can use demand replenishment as a supplement between min-max replenishment cycles. Cycle counting ensures that the system inventory count matches physical inventory count. This method involves performing a regular count and recording the inventory adjustments. Warehouse managers and supply chain professionals often prepare the plan for the warehouse workers to audit inventory. The most efficient inventory management plans lead to minimal transaction error rates and extremely high inventory accuracy without taking away too much time from the workers' essential tasks. Regardless of whether a company uses periodic or perpetual inventory practices to track its inventory, regular cycle counting is necessary audit process to maintain the inventory discrepancies. Many companies perform physical inventory count at the end of the year as part of the financial audit process. Large companies with thousands of items typically halt operations up to a week or more to perform a physical full physical inventory count. This could inconvenience vendors and customers as the warehousing operations are completely halted during that duration. Cycle counting is an inventory management option that allows you to count items in a designated area of the warehouse without stopping operations to perform a complete physical inventory. Cycle counting counts small pre-selected sections of inventory multiple times a year, sometimes as often as daily. Performing only a physical inventory is a good choice for companies with smaller warehouses. However, if your company has large warehouses, performing cycle counts for a few locations periodically can help you maintain a higher level of inventory accuracy throughout the year. If you don't use an integrated shipping solution, you have to perform many steps in the shipping process manually which is a highly error-prone approach. You have to locate the partial shipping orders to process, fetch the relevant sales order and customer details from your ERP, enter these details into your shipping carrier's website, enter the shipping parameters for label generation, print the individual shipping labels, paste each label on, a, on the correct container, and hand, hand the containers over to the shipping carrier. You also need to track the master tracking numbers of the containers manually 
and visit your shipping carrier's website to trace the status of the packages. Fortunately, Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations now comes with the small package shipping that interacts directly with the shipping carrier by providing a framework for communication through carrier APIs. This functionality is useful when you're shipping individual sales orders via commercial shipping carriers instead of using container shipping or less than truckload shipping. Uh, over to you, Pawan. Thank you, Amir. Great inputs on advanced warehousing features. We will continue furthermore, adding to Amir's points. Nowadays, warehouses are getting equipped with material handling machines for automation. Most of the warehouse management systems don't have the framework to talk to these machines. Microsoft has brought in the material handling equipment interface that connects external physical material handling system to a warehouse that is managed by advanced warehouse in Microsoft Dynamics. The interface between the advanced warehousing and material handling systems consists of two queues, one for outbound events and the other for inbound events. The advanced warehousing system generates outbound events based on work lines that are created during various work creation and execution processes. The material handling system then regularly pulls the advanced warehousing system for new events and processes the responses. After the material handling system has finished handling the events following work instructions, sends inbound events such as work line completion and short picking, wherein it's a kind of acknowledgement to Dynamics 365 that the system has executed the request or instruction. Now we will just go through the cluster picking. One of the feature helps in picking optimization at outbound. Advanced warehousing provides one of the most efficient ways to speed up the picking process of multiple orders assigned to the worker. The mobile app consolidates multiple picklists into a cluster and helps establish a pick route through the warehouse to pick multiple orders. This would lead to a shorter distance and avoid a scenario where the picker has to visit the same location twice. While picking up the items, the items are placed in different tots as per the order that they belong to. With this approach, all the items picked will be sorted in the boxes at the end of the picking route. When system directed cluster picking is set up, you can cluster pick work headers based on the system generated cluster. The system cluster picks orders up to the number of positions that are specified in the cluster profile. Therefore, you can pick multiple orders at the same time without having to manually group picking to work into a cluster. Picker can collect the pick list and place the individual pick list into the toys. The picker, the picker can go through the aisles as per the recommendations by the mobile device and scan the items to ensure that they are picking the right items and put them into the respective tots. The other way is user can manually create a cluster and add multiple picking work into the cluster using the mobile app. Picking work from the warehouse will then be grouped and sorted by location or the item to increase efficiency. Cluster picking offers significant levels of optimization. You can pick multiple orders at a time by incorporating the picking tasks of various orders and sequencing them accordingly. When a worker order, work order is assigned to a cluster, the worker must be cluster picking to perform the picking work for the order. The worker cannot use the other picking methods. If your work order is assigned to a cluster by mistake, the worker must break the cluster 
before completing the picking through a different picking method. And if needed, a worker can pass the cluster to another worker. So next feature, we will go through about quality management. So quality management for warehouses or processes automatically creates work to more items, markets for incoming inspection into a quality control location. When the items are received, once the items are inspected and the quality work is closed, the system will create a put away work from the quality control location to the storage location. These features reduce training requirements and eliminate the need to remember which items need an inspection. Another quality management feature is the ability to set up sample sizes for incoming inspection based on the quality uh, quantity received. Quality work is created for the specific quantity and the remaining quantity is put away in the storage location. This allows for a reduced workload for the quality team while maintaining the quality control. This is very useful during supplier qualification or critical items. Again, a way to intelligently manage workload and maintain control over quality for purchase and product receipts. So thank you all. Now I'm going to hand over it to Scott. He will take over you on case studies and customer experience on the warehouse management. Over to you, Scott. Thank you, Pavan. I'm happy to have this opportunity to tell you about a few improvements, accomplishments that we've helped our clients achieve. The two case studies that I will discuss have new and not so new features, but both with great impact to the companies in terms of cost, quality, and delivery. The first case resulted in a fulfillment improvement through standard FNO features. The second case improves data entry time and reduces mistakes through the use of new FNO features from version 10.0.21. The case on this slide was a large manufacturing and retail company with a large distribution footprint. The company was suffering from a significant amount of double handling and lower than desired fulfillment. The company needed a solution to eliminate an unnecessary move to a bulk location of newly manufactured product as well as to replenish the picking locations before the batch sales order release. Core was able to create a priority move to divert newly manufactured product to the picking locations, which eliminated the unneeded second bulk pull by using warehouse directives. Secondly, we deployed the standard min-max replenishment from the bulk storage to picking locations, which helped fulfill the entire sales order saving packaging and processing costs resulting from multiple releases. At Core, we listen to the customer requirements and then implement the right configured solution to minimize cost and improve the process. We fit the right solution to the process. The second scenario, the second case is where Core is in the process of implementing GS1 barcode for a large process manufacturing company. The company has significant data entry requirements such as item code, batch number, manufacturing date, and the running number during PO receiving, report is finished, as well as outbound oper operations. Core and the customer recognize the requirement together and endeavor to be one of the first companies to implement this newly released functionality. This is something that you can expect from Core. We will work with our partners to implement the smartest solutions for our customers, whether it is new features, old features, or a required enhancement. The GS1 label offers a great efficiency improvement by eliminating multiple entries into the system. Many of those transactions were once manual. Now I will hand it over to Pavan to give you a demonstration. Pavan? Thank you, Scott, for taking us through the case studies. We'll now move on to the demo. For the purpose of maintaining quality, this next session on demo has been pre-recorded and inside.
So now we will step into the demonstration where we can see the application of Dynamics 365 for finance and operations, where we can see the advanced warehouse module and also some kind of inbound scenario and outbound scenarios. So today on the inbound receiving, we'll go through some of the scenarios like how to receive the items at the dock by the warehouse and the worker doing the visual inspection and then finally mobile app how it gives the intelligently it gives the put away instructions to the worker okay we can see those things and finally go paperless and finally post the product receipt by the warehouse for whatever the put away was done. So if we see the flow for the inbound receiving, let's take an example over here. Uh, normally suppliers sends the advanced shipping notice to the procurement team or the warehouse, whomever in contact. So for now in our example, we are thinking that procurement team will get the advanced shipping notice details from the supplier and buyer can key in the ASN details to Dynamics and thereafter uh, how the warehouse manager monitors the shipments that are going to receive and plan for the fragmentation. Okay. And finally, when the shipment got arrived in the warehouse, okay, what are the steps? How the manual, uh, how the visual inspection can be done using mobile app, okay? And if the worker has accepted, okay, so if the worker has accepted the, so if the worker has accepted the visual inspection. So in the mobile device would be giving the instruction to move it to the more uh, storage location. Otherwise, mobile device will instruct the worker to move the items to the return location. So you see how the mobile device will be instructing it. And finally, after whatever the items are received in the warehouse, we'll be making the posting the uh, product receipt. And after that, finance can do the two-way matching comparing the quantities and the prices that were received and finally post the invoice. Based on the authorizations or the roles and responsibilities assigned to him, he can see only his options so that even the data will be very limited as per the roles they have. Okay, so now we will step into our warehouse management module as we discussed, we'll be going through the inbound. Okay, I'll just project the slide once again. So if we see here, procurement team receives the ASN and they key in the ASN. And finally, warehouse man uh, manager monitors the receiving shipments. Uh, we can monitor, I will show all those things. Okay, first we'll go a step how the buyer can key in the ASN. So coming to the Dynamics 365, I can give the access to the buyer to create the loads, okay? So, sorry, for that, for creating the loads, I can use the warehouse module, warehouse management module. So we will see how the buyer can create the loads, okay? For this buyer, I can give the access to the buyer or the warehouse supervisor to create the loads. I can go to the load planning work range and see the respective purchase orders, okay? Here I'm having the purchase order line step. I can see the lots of purchase orders over here, the open purchase orders. 
Okay, so here I can select the purchase orders for which I got the intimation from the supplier for which I'm getting the shipment. Okay, so I'm selecting a couple of purchase orders just for an instance. Okay, and then I'm creating a load. So my shipment is coming in a 20 feet container. Okay, I can create the 20 feet container over here. Select the 20 feet container. And if there is any partial quantities, I can update over here, then click OK. So a load got created over here. If I click the load ID, I can still update more details like estimated time of arrival okay or load arrival date and time i can update it okay so these are my load lines okay and to key in the advanced shipping notice details i can go to the packing structure I can key in the shipment number like let's say click OK. Now I can select the items that are coming in the load or the container or the shipments. I can select all the items over here and click add to the yes and items. So my ASN got created now, okay? Now, this is the work by the buyer or the warehouse supervisor on getting the details from the supplier. So in this shipment, I'm getting all these details. So this is the advanced shipping note. And under that advanced shipping note, I'm getting these items, okay? So this is the mobile device application. So on the mobile device, I'm having the inbound folder where the worker can make the mobile uh, operations on the warehouse. Okay, so Dynamics would be giving the instructions to the worker by on this app. Okay, so he can give the his credentials, his user ID and credentials. So once I logged in, it will show all the operations that I can take over in the warehouse. So even if I'm I want to show only the specific operations, let's say inbound operations to a particular worker, I can do that. I can create a separate structure and assign to the worker so that worker can see only the inbound operations and he won't be uh, outbound or the other inventory options won't be available for him. Okay, for now we will go to the inbound. So on the inbound, I need to make the receiving by the advanced shipping notice. Okay, I'll go to the advanced shipping notice receiving. And before going here, uh, I just want to show once again, we will just see the work that got created for the advanced shipping note. Uh, sorry. Now, okay, coming back. So advanced shipping notice has been created and in the warehouse, I'm going to receive the, today I have received the shipment from the supplier. So I need to receive the shipment. I can click the ASN receiving. I can scan the advanced shipping note. Okay, ID. So if you see here, whatever are there on my advanced shipping note is those items, mobile app is already showing over here. So worker can validate the items on the list 
and click OK. Work got completed. So what it's going to do with the things that work got completed means. So let's go to the dynamics now and we will see what happened. So I'll go to the all loads. Now, it's just loading, yeah. On the advanced, so we have created the advanced shipping notice. So we will go to this here. And this is the advanced shipping notice that we have created earlier. So if I come here and see the work, system has created the work for the items that are there on my advanced shipping notice. So I have received the two items in my receiving dock. These are in the receiving location. As the items are multiple, it is not showing here in the instruction. So whereas on the put, as it needs to be moved to FL001, the A0001 item, six feed cables, it's showing here. And at the same time, about the FL002 location, we need to move the 12 inch cable, 12 feet cable, sorry. So now let's go and see how we, I can do this operation on the mobile device. So this is the work got created. In between, if we see, we have got an option for quality check. We'll see how it will work. At the same time, we are saying, go paperless. So on the mobile app, I can see an option called open PO work. So the worker can click this and see all the open PO works over here. Okay. So, and then we can see the works that are all open. So worker can select any of the work for his choice. Click OK. And now if we see here, this is the same work that got created for our ASM. So worker can go reach the receiving location and pick the ASM. Okay, the, on the pallet wherever he see the items from the advanced shipping notice, he can identify them and pick those items. Okay. Now, this is for the quality check. So here, if my worker can see an option, if he needs to reject, he can reject the items or otherwise, okay, he can accept that, okay? I'm accepting this. So as the worker has accepted the quality by the visual inspection, now, it is showing to move the items to the FL001. He has kept the FL001, item set FL001. Now the next instruction, put instruction, is being projected on the mobile device screen. So now it is showing to move the 12 feet cables to FL002. So you see, the uh, put away has been completed. If I come here, my inventory was moved to the FL001 and FL002. So this is how the mobile device helps. Okay, so from the receiving, nobody has instructed the worker to move the items to the FL001 or FL002. Dynamics by the intelligence, where to move the items, it has given the instruction. It can be by like, if we need to find the, identify the existing location for this inventory, Dynamics can do that. Or if Dynamics needs to suggest an empty location, 
it can do that or if dynamics wants to like if the sorry if the warehouse wants to move the items to the particular zone dynamics can help that so that's how our we can configure the dynamics and dynamics can support further operations finally after completing the put away okay so the next thing is receiving okay so now i'm on the work i will close the work i can go to the same is in the load that got created from the load if i see here the work status is zero percent i will refresh this now it's got completed to 100 percent and load status is in process okay now i need to receive this okay i will confirm the inbound shipment and then i'll refresh this so i see the product receipt is not enabled so the reason is the purchase order has not been confirmed so i can go to the purchase order from here itself i can inform the procurement team that it's not confirmed so dynamics is very strict okay so we need to do some of the operations before doing this so i'll confirm the purchase order and after confirmation i can go back to my load and i will refresh this so now i can see the product receipt enabled so if i have the multiple purchase orders in my load i can post the product receipt for all the purchase orders at one shot so now i'll click as system is suggesting regardless whether you know you now process the product receipt or not okay will get confirmed orders will get confirmed okay so now i have received these items and i am posting the product receipt now we have seen the things how it works for if we go to our back uh, back to our process flow we have seen what it's done on accepting okay move the items to the storage now i will take one more example instead of face and i will make a purchase order receiving and i will show reject the items and how system will act we will see <coughs> so i go to the procurement and sourcing to identify a open purchase order i'll take a sample of purchase order over here and even the purchase order is in approved status i'll confirm the order now let's go back to the warehouse mobile device app we will make the purchase order receiving and we will see how the system is generating the work so now i will scan this order number now we will see how to receive this purchase order okay let's say vendor is having a label okay he has uh, a label in the gs1 format where on the label it is having the barcode containing the item number quantity batch number okay so now let's say vendor has sent a shipment and on the shipment i am having the labels from the vendor in gs1 format so on gs1 format i am having the item detail quantity detail batch number detail okay so now i will see 
I will show how to scan this and receive the item. So first we will go with the purchase order receiving GS1 item. So now we will see the vendor has sent the items with GS1 barcode format. Now how the worker can receive the item by scanning this GS1. So I have created the purchase order receive GS1 menu item. I'll click this. Now I need to give the input of the purchase order number. So I'm giving the purchase order number. Now in the scan item, okay, I can scan the GS1. So now as I don't have the scanner in my hand, I'm just giving the detail of the GS1. So now if you see here, this value will be based on the mobile de uh, handheld device I'm using. So this by default, we need to configure on Dynamics based on the handheld device that warehouse is using. Okay, And after that, with this character, the 01 is the prefix for the GT, and the 10 is the prefix for the batch number, and 30 is the prefix for the quantity. Okay, and this tilt symbol is a separator between each field. In the scan item, I'm giving all these details. Now, Warehouse Mobile app will match these values and fill all the values in one shot. So mobile app will fill all the values based on the separators and the prefixes. If you see here, it has updated the 20 quantity. Okay. 20 quantity were updated, item was updated. Okay. And it's not having the batch in my system. Though the vendor has sent the batch, I'm not following the batch. So it has ignored the batch. Click OK. Work completed. Now my receiving got completed. System should generate a peak work now. Let's go to Dynamics and check the peak work. So if you remember in earlier transaction, I moved A00 to A0002 12 feet cable to FL002. So even now, system is intelligently showing us to move the items to FL002. Now, let's process this work. Let's do the put away. I'm going to the open PO work. I'm going to this work, 397. And I can see the 20 pieces. Add the receiving dock, worker can pick this and then click OK. Now this is the quality check. So at this point of time, I'm rejecting the quality. Reject it. Wow, system has shown us intelligently to move the items to the return location. If you see, the work is it, uh, put away work was generated to move the items to the FL002. But as the worker has rejected the item, it was asking to move him to the returns instead of FL002. Perfect. That's all. So the put away was done. And if I go back, we can make the product receipt. So for whatever the quantity I received or I did the put away, I can make the product receipt. So if I'm having the vendor delivery note number, I can update the same over here. And I'm receiving the 20 quantity. So if you see the registered quantity. So registered quantity means whatever I received in my warehouse. Now my purchase order has been received. If I refresh this, we can see the status. So it is in the received status. So that's what is on the inbound process. 
So far, we have seen the inbound warehousing processes. I will now talk about the outbound warehousing process. Briefly, for want of time, and again, we plan we plan to demonstrate the outbound features in our next webinar. And those of you who may have an urgent need to see the demo, please feel free to contact our sales teams and we'll be very glad to arrange separate demonstration for you. So till now we have seen the inbound warehousing. Now we will see some of the functionalities or the features for with respect to the outbound warehousing. Okay, so coming to the outbound warehousing, we will see some of the functionalities like allocation, how the sales team can get the orders allocated, okay, and how they can release it to the warehouse for pick and pack, and how the warehouse can make the cluster picking, utilize the cluster picking, and make the optimized picking, and then moving it to the pick in the worker, doing the pick and pack processes, and finally posting the packing slip. So coming to the process, so coming to the process, uh, normally sales teams creates the sales orders and dynamics uh, can even help to make the manual reservation and as well automatic reservation. So automatic reservation in a sense, as soon as the order got created by the first in first out basis, the order immediately will be allocated with the stocks, means it is reserved with the physical inventory. And then after reserving it, uh, sales can release the orders to the warehouse for shipping, or it can be by the scheduled release as per the request dates. Okay. And then warehouse worker gets the dynamics, creates the pick list, and warehouse worker can get that pick list. And in this scenario, what we are going to show is, we are taking an example of small orders, where worker can keep that orders in the tots, okay? And they can scan this pick list, so that in which tot it is there, it will, map the tot to the pick list. So as all the orders or pick lists are scanned, it will create a cluster, okay? And it will consolidate all the items and sort by the location. And at the time of picking, this consolidation and sorting will be there. And also it will advise in which tot to move the item so that the items are moved to the respective tots based on the pick list on the order. And then they can move it to the packing station where they can pack the items and stick the labels. And finally, they can move it to the staging or the bay door. Once the truck got in, so they can move the items to the truck. And after that, they can post the packing slip. Thank you, Pavan, for that informative demonstration. As a next step, Core Competence would like to engage you on the details and to discuss the options available for a transition to Microsoft Dynamics 365 Advanced Warehouse Management. Or as Pavan has mentioned, if you have any urgent need or simply want to a demo on other features, please contest, contact us directly by adding your information in the contact window or calling us directly, and we will get back with you soon to discuss your business needs. Lastly, if you're interested in a strategic assessment of your current processes or a proof of concept and project scope, please contact us. I would like to thank everyone for joining us today, and I hope you found the presentation useful. We hope to hear from you soon. Now I will hand it over to Q Susan for the Q&A. Susan? Thank you so much, Scott, 
Pava and Amir, that was a wonderful presentation and demo. Thank you so much. We do have some questions coming in, um, and this is bringing us obviously to the next part of our uh, presentation, which is our question and answer session. Um, let me go ahead and forward us to the next slide. Um, we do have some questions coming in. Um, please use the GoToWebinar interface to submit your questions. And I've got this first one that's come in. This is from Andy. Uh, he is asking, what are the operations that GS1 supports in Dynamics? Pavan, would you mind taking that one? Sure, sir. So the GS1, is configurable for each step throughout the supply chain process. It is configurable for incoming receiving with multiple formats from different vendors. And print in uh, generate format of the entire operations for the business such as transfers, replenishment, movement, picking, production completion, and others. Thank you so much. Um, this is another question that kind of uh, dovetails off of the um, last one about the um, GS1. Uh, this question is from Brian. He is asking for the GS1 barcode, does the system support both single and two-dimensional barcodes? Pavan, do you want to answer that? Yeah, Dynamics Warehouse Management is, I mean, the app is capable to read both single and two-dimensional barcodes. Thank you, thank you. All right, this question is from Harper and she's asking, can we limit the number of orders that are added to a cluster and when system directed cluster picking is in use? I would like to know how the picking work can be so system. Uh, let me answer that soon. So in a cluster profile, we can define what the number of maximum positions. So that will basically indicate how many orders are grouped together in a single cluster. So for example, if you're picking cart has nine totes, uh, you can define the number of positions as nine. So that way nine orders get grouped together. Uh, now with respect to the second half of the question where we're being asked about the, the sequencing in which the picking work is um, grouped, um, basically, in the cluster profile, we have a sorting uh, setup, which will determine how the picking work is sequenced within a cluster. So uh, examples of fields that can be used are location ID, location sort code, or even the order ID, or it, it could even be you know a combination of either of these. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, yes, thank you so much. That was excellent, thank you. Um, this next question is from Andrew, and he typed, on the replenishment types, I noticed slotting as an option. Can you explain how slotting works in Dynamics? Um, yeah, I can address that, uh, Susan. Um, the slotting replenishment feature, it consolidates uh, demand for multiple orders so that inventory can be brought to a more convenient location in a convenient and efficient, efficient picking location. Um, it's very effective when you have multiple orders with single lines of partial pallet quantities. So uh, the system uh, can be configured so that it will consider inventory in the slotting location or without the slotting location and bring all inventory required for all the demand in that slotting replenishment. It's a very useful tool and can save a lot of time. So, Sounds like thanks. it. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Okay, and here's another question. Um, uh, this is from Tom. How does cycle count by threshold work? Well, I, I, can, well, I can address that as well, Susan. Um, okay, uh, the threshold works. It's a feature that creates a cycle count work so that the worker is instructed to go out and take that cycle count when the inventory drops below a certain preset level or percentage. Um, I guess the, the not the I guess the idea of this is to reduce the amount of time it takes to cycle count it. It's, it's very effective on items that are serialized because you don't have to search through as many items to see serial uh, the serial number and confirm. It's a very big time saver. And one other feature of it that I just remembered is that uh, 
you uh, it prevents cycle count work from being created for something that drops below that threshold that was just counted yesterday or in a time frame that you defined so that you're not going and recounting over and over the same thing. Okay, thanks. Thank, yeah. Yeah, thank you for that detailed answer, Scott. Okay, I have one last question um, before we need to wrap up. Um, this last question is from Michael, and he wrote, I have a question about the small partial shipping. Is small partial shipping available right out of the box, or does it require any development? Let me answer that. So uh, first of all, that's a great question. Um, SPS provides a framework for communication between Dynamics 365 FinOps and the shipping carrier through an API. So basically when you're grouping items into a container and when you're closing the container, that's when the API call is being made. So yes, there is some amount of development required to achieve this integration, but yes, SPS provides a framework for, for doing so. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Um, and this brings us to the end of our webinar. Uh, if we have not been able to answer your questions, someone from our sales team will get back to you. As a next step, we would encourage you to connect with us one-on-one -on -one as we're open to engage with you for a one-on-one -on -one strategic assessment of your requirements at no obligation. We hope you would take advantage of this limited time offer and contact us at sales at corecompetence.com. Thank you, and we hope you have a wonderful day ahead. Uh, Scott, Amir, Pavan, our panelists, thank you so much for being here and uh, your in-depth explanations and um, your demos, really fascinating. And to all of our attendees, thank you as well. Um, there is a survey here at the end, if you uh, please uh, would go ahead and take that survey. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Take care. Thank you, Susan. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank you. Have a good evening.